Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the 1 106 of the second photography podcast. And this episode is called Implications of the Canon EOS R and Nikon Z cameras. So you might have been aware and, and who wouldn't have been aware that Canon and Nikon have brought out a new mirrorless full frame camera each. They've been quite hyped and particularly the, the Nikon one was, was incredibly hyped. And I just want to talk about how this is going to affect me in this podcast episode. In all honesty, I don't think it will have too much of an effect on me because I'm not looking to buy a new camera. So I need to think about this in terms of what would happen if my current Canon camera broke. So I've really enjoyed sort of looking at the specs and, and looking at sort of what people say and think about this new camera. It's quite interesting development from a manufacturer. It will bring innovation forward and, and Canon really need to catch up and, and so do Nikon. But does this spell the end of DSLRs? Well, I don't know. I can't imagine Canon will instantly drop DSLRs, same with Nikon, and they'll probably keep DSLRs going for the APS-C non-full frame bodies that they sell. Like I say, it is very interesting. So let's imagine my Canon 5D, my 12 megapixel Canon 5D breaks. What would I do? Would I rush out and buy a new camera? No, I probably wouldn't because I have other cameras that I can use for my particular style of photography. And also I have a APS-C Canon body that I could use if I wanted to. So do these cameras have any bearing on me whatsoever? They do, because the price of the current sets of bodies is going to lower when the new EOS R comes out. And also it means current use prices are gonna drop further. That's where I would be looking if I needed to replace my Canon 5D. First of all, I would be looking to maybe get it fixed. Do I need to replace it? The camera is very old. I don't I don't even know if Canon support fixing it. If it's just a minor thing, maybe I could get it fixed. If it's something major like the shutter mechanism or something like that, then maybe I can't get it fixed. I don't actually know how many shots the camera's done. I've not checked that and I certainly didn't check that when I bought the camera used. So I think the camera's now 15 years old so or the model of camera is now 15 years old so it might be it is on its last legs and it isn't fixable so if I were looking at a new camera what sort of things would I consider if I decide to go down the DSLR route now don't forget I have cameras from other brands and I have micro four thirds but actually I'm lining up to sell my micro four thirds kit I just haven't got round to it yet of course there's the consideration of do I need a DSLR or do I need a big interchangeable lens camera I think I do I think I do still need that for the style of photography I do. But really, it's the reliability that the DSLR gives me. It's the ability in low light that even my old 12 megapixel Canon 5D Mark I gives me. It gives me very good abilities in low light. So things I would be looking for are price. Now the Canon EOS R, I don't know the full details and all the tech specs and I haven't researched them for this. I'm just going off what I already know because I won't do as good a job as someone else as as provided providing the specs. There'll be someone out there on a blog or on a YouTube video or in an article who will be able to write out the specs much better than I will. Again, don't forget, I'm happy with 12 megapixels, so specs aren't really my thing. Most people have said from reviews and sort of commentary I've seen, the price will be on par with a 6D Mark II. So would I rather get a 6D Mark II or the Canon EOS R? I think I'd probably rather get the Canon EOS R. So things I'm looking for is reliability. Now, I'm not a professional photographer, but I want to know when I turn up to do my photography that things are going to work. There's nothing worse than turning up to do photography. And particularly when you do flash photography, you set everything up, you keep people waiting, you get everything going. Oh, um, the flash isn't firing. Oh, and this isn't working, but it should be working. And you spend more time problem solving than actually doing photography. I, I don't want that. So when I talk about reliability, I'm talking about reliability of everything within the ecosystem, reliability of lenses, reliability of the camera, flashes working and stuff like that, card slots working. I'm not talking about reliability of the bodies because I'm fairly confident the bodies are very reliable. Even my very old camera is still working brilliantly. My old APS-C camera from Canon is working brilliantly. So I'm looking at reliability of flash and that would make me want to buy into Canon again. Rather than go to Nikon where I'd not only have to replace all my lenses and things like that, but I'd have to replace all my flashes, learn or the new system again. I know the Canon one works, I know what I can do and I know its strengths, its weaknesses, so I'm going to stick with that. Maybe people forget that when they move system. You're not just trading in your lenses, you're trading in other things. How well your flashes work, 
any sort of tethering shooting you might or might not be doing. So don't forget Canon has been the brand leader for a long time so most things are designed to work with Canon and they come out first. Will the video quality be better? Well, the video quality isn't a huge consideration for me because I shoot in 1080. While I say I'm not bothered about 4K, I suppose it would be nice to have it, but I do need to consider would I need to upgrade my software on my PC to handle 4K footage? Would I need to upgrade my storage as well? I don't know. Certainly I'd upload in 1080p to um, places like YouTube and Facebook, but would I shoot past 1080p? I, I don't know. I suppose it'd be one of those things that really I'd want to try out, see if there's any benefit, see how it fits into my workflow, and so on and so forth. The other main thing to consider with the camera is that I would need an adapter to use my existing lenses. Now no one, from what I've seen, and again, I haven't watched every review, I haven't read everything on it, but no one has commented on how well the old EF lenses work with the adapter. So is it like shooting on a normal DSLR? Or do you get a little bit of lag or is the autofocus not quite as good? I don't know, so that's something I'll be really interested to know about. I'm told the EOS R will come with the adapter for your EF lenses with the body. And in terms of weight, it doesn't seem that much different in terms of size and weight. We're not talking like a micro four thirds body. It looks a pretty chunky body. And I think people have applauded that, that it's a big body, it's got a good grip. Really, what's the, why not just have a DSLR? if it's only going to be a little bit bigger or a little bit heavier. The other thing to consider is would I be happy with an APS-C body? I've always been quite keen on the ATD. I've not shelled out and bought an ATD, but I've been quite keen on the ATD. I, I, I've liked the look of the ATD. There's the 7D Mark II as well to consider. And those by the time this EOS R comes out will have dropped in price again, I'm sure, and will be cheaper still in the used market. Looking at the 6D, which would I want out of those two, the 6D Mark II or the EOS R? I think for me it would come down to price because even though the 6D Mark II has been sort of heavily criticised online, it's still a huge jump up from my 12 megapixel camera. It'll handle approximately the same, it'll do video better because my 12 megapixel 5D doesn't do video, my APS-C one does, but it's quite nice to shoot full frame video. That'd be much nicer than APS-C, particularly in low light. What factor would make me pick one over the other? Well, it'd probably be price. For all intents and purposes, probably the price of the 6D Mark II will drop when the EOS R comes out, particularly in used as well. I might be tempted for the 6D Mark II, Really, I'd want to try them side by side, look at the images, particularly if I'm going to invest that amount of money. But coming back to APS-C, I'm not sure there'd be anything wrong with an ATD. Now, I think the question a lot of people are going to have is, have Canon done enough to stop people jumping ship and moving to different brands? Well, for me, that doesn't matter. I was, I'm never going to move to a different brand, not because I'm a loyal Canon fanboy or I have huge loyalty, but because I've sort of made my investment in kit and I'm just going to use it now. I've, I've bought my lenses, I've bought my system, bought my body, I bought my flashes, bought my reflectors, bought my softboxes. I bought all that and I plan not to spend any more money on photography stuff. If something breaks, if I need to, I'll replace it. But other than that, I don't really want to be doing that. I'd love to think that my Canon 5D will last forever, and who knows, I might get a long, long use out of it. But if it did break, I would have to consider, do I replace it? I'd rather not. But because I have such an investment already in Canon, I probably would replace it with a Canon camera, even if there's better out there. Because the body is, is, the, is my last consideration. People make a lot of fuss and, and worry about the body but you're better off putting your money in lenses you're better off putting your money in other kit rather than the body the body should be your last consideration i think for many people the camera body is the first consideration but really it should be the last consideration i won't be jumping to fuji i won't be jumping to sony even though i might be using my canon lenses with them i just want something simple that works that i'm used to and uses my existing setup Maybe I've been a bit bit of a downer on that, on the new EOS R, and I shouldn't be. I'm glad Canon have fully sort of moved with the times and aren't being criticised so much. Because with camera manufacturers, one day someone will be in the lead and other people need to catch up. A few years down the line, that brand who was in the lead might now be sort of sitting last in terms of certain functionalities or abilities. If all the camera manufacturers effectively stay still, there would be no innovation, there'd be no new products. And we're probably reaching a point in digital photography where things aren't gonna get better with the same pace of change that they had before. I suspect we're starting to level out in terms of rates of innovation and change. So anything that brings new change and innovation to the market is to be applauded. Canon used to be the top one for video because they were first to market with really good video DSLRs. And now maybe they're not. 
because someone else has overtaken them. Well, maybe this is Cannon's turn to catch up. Maybe they won't catch up as much as everyone expects. But certainly, Cannon and Nikon jumping on board fully, and I, I say fully jumping on board, mirrorless cameras is a big thing. I don't think they will completely get rid of DSLRs. I think there's still a place for DSLRs. I certainly do. I still think they'll be around for a long time. And with DSLRs, you don't have the sensor showing, so you do get a bit of protection there. And Canon have sort of been quite clever. They're the only ones I've seen who have the ability to protect the sensor when the camera's not on. So the curtain comes down to protect the sensor. I don't know why anyone else hasn't thought of that. That's such an obvious thing to do. But everyone else who's mirrorless has the sensor exposed. It's just going to get dirty. At least the mirror mechanism in the DSLR does do some protecting and keeps dirt off and stuff. Those are my views on the new mirrorless offerings from Canon and Nikon. Have a look down below for the link for Twitter because you can follow me on Twitter. Have a look at the Patreon link in the description in case you wanted to support me on Patreon. Do let me know your thoughts on what I've discussed in the podcast. I always welcome your views and your opinions. Thank you. Goodbye.